just heard Kristen Welker um, speaking with campaign officials say that despite Donald Trump's threat of bringing up Bill Clinton's infidelities directly to Hillary Clinton on the debate stage, she's going to let him run his race. She will run hers. How do you see this, knowing Hillary Clinton so well, how do you see her responding on a debate stage if he tries that? Yeah, it's going to be tough, Tamara. And I mean, obviously, these are very, very personal accusations. They get right to the thing that she is most sensitive about, Secretary Clinton, her relationship with her husband, that horrible humiliation she went through in the 90s. But, you know, they're prepared for this. They knew this was going to happen. They knew that this is the way Trump is going to approach the, her candidacy. So they're very prepared, and they're going to handle it in due time. What they're not going to do is handle it yet. She is still in a primary battle with Bernie Sanders. And Secretary Clinton cannot really directly engage Donald Trump as she's going to once the nomination is put away. As you know, we've got primaries today. Uh, it's likely that Senator, that Senator Sanders could do very well in Oregon, could win Kentucky, as you've reported. This may go on into June, into California and New Jersey, as, as Kristen said. So once the, once the battle's turned directly toward Donald Trump, I think you'll see her being more aggressive, and she's ready to take on that, that issue of her husband and their relationship. Well, it's and not, they'll get there when they get there. Well, Beth, it's not often when you're getting ready to battle someone that they just list out everything that they plan to do. I, I, and some believe that Donald Trump has another strategy here, but he's telegraphing this. She's got time to have a reply locked and loaded for him. Will it certainly be perhaps some of the things we just heard in that Super PAC ad, which are lines directly from Donald Trump's mouth about women? Absolutely. I, I actually think she'll, she'll, uh, she'll depend on surrogates, Super PACs like Priorities USA. But in a debate, there's no surrogate. It's you, it's him. Yeah, and in the debate, she's going to have to. I, she'll, she'll address it long before the debate. She's going to have to. She can't just simply sit there and sort of coast on, I'm not going to touch that. I'm not going to go anywhere near that. I'm just going to talk about policy. It's just impossible. The, the, the debates aren't going to happen until October. She'll address it. Shane, let me bring you in because this article that you've written is so fascinating. One of Donald Trump's chief uh, bragging points is that he's brought in millions of new supporters. It's something that he's used as leverage against the RNC, that he's used against Speaker Ryan. And in your report, you look at, for example, Ohio, and you saw record turnout in the GOP primary, 2 million voters. That's twice as many that voted in 2012. But of those 2 million voters, 92 percent voted in one of the last three general elections, meaning they're not really new to the GOP. You make the same point about Florida. Yeah, so this has absolutely been central to Donald Trump's candidacy. He says, I'm bringing in millions and millions of new voters. And the data from some of these early states just don't show it. What it shows is that these are new primary voters. He is driving record-setting primary turnout. But general elections are much bigger than primaries. Uh, Barack Obama was reelected with almost 66 million voters. And right now, Donald Trump has won 11 million voters. So he's not even one-third of the way uh, to, to half of, of that. So he really is, uh, you know, maybe exaggerating uh, some of these expanding the electorate claims. Well, when you look at, for example, this daily tracking poll that we keep showing that, um, again, Hillary Clinton is still battling Bernie Sanders. She is not the presumptive nominee at this point. So many uh, have certainly noted how much of an investment we should put in, in this number. However, Trump has, Shane, hired this pollster now. So he recognizes the analysis that you point out. I just want to show Florida as well. 6% of the 2.3 million people who voted in this year's primary did not cast a voice in the last two general elections. So Trump putting his fortunes in these voters may not be a wise gamble to keep the casino background that he has. Yeah, I mean, what it means is that he's not changing the electorate so much that he completely changes the electoral map. Now, uh, 100,000 votes is a lot of votes, yeah. right? That's a potential difference in a place like Ohio and Florida. But what it isn't is completely remaking the map the way he's talked about, putting places like New York into play, putting places like Wisconsin into play, states that have been overwhelmingly Democratic for a long time. And so, yes, he is bringing new voters into the primaries, but those are different than general election voters. Uh, and so, it, you know, it's going to be a challenge for him. And it just underscores the need for him to have data, pollsters, and being able to crunch those numbers himself. And Beth, let's talk about what happened yesterday um, on the campaign trail. Hillary Clinton indicating that she would use Bill Clinton as an economic uh, messenger, that he would be, quote, revitalizing the economy. That would be his role if she's elected. In a statement, her spokesperson tried to clarify this, saying she said many times in the past that when it comes to revitalizing certain regions or certain sectors, she specifically mentioned coal and manufacturing, that she would certainly want his advice and 
counsel. It would be getting ahead of oneself to talk about any sort of formalized role for anyone in your administration. Why is it getting ahead of herself to talk about the role of uh, what Democrats certainly see as one of their most successful presidents? Well, it's 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 quite tricky. I mean, there's there's a lot of legal reasons why she can't put him in the cabinet. She could find a, a role in the White House that is not specifically something that the Senate would have to confirm. For example, when she, when Bill Clinton was in the White House, as we know, Hillary Clinton was that was basically the health care czar. So these are sort of czar roles that she could put him in. But she has to play it very carefully around Bill Clinton. He is absolutely very popular with a certain segment of the Democratic electorate who remember the 90s, remember the peace and the prosperity, as Hillary Clinton also always talks about. But he's also unpopular in among many Bernie Sanders voters who remember him passing these trade deals that hurt American workers. He, he helped sort of deregulate the banking system, which allowed uh, uh, banking to kind of run amok. So he's not universally popular in the parts of the party that she still needs to win over. So she needs to do that sort of push-pull, Tamron. She has to talk about how great he was in certain ways, but not fully embrace him to the extent that it makes him more controversial. Well, we just got new sound in Bill Clinton being asked about the role he would play in his wife's administration. He's in Puerto Rico. Let's play it. I have asked, actually, to be given the job of trying to help every part of the United States that has been left out and left behind economically. And I think it is very, very important. That's a little bit of what he said, not exactly hitting in on his role um, if he is uh, in the, the husband, I guess, of the president. I don't even know what the title would be at this point. But Shane, uh, when you look at Donald Trump signaling that he's willing to, to her face, bring up Bill Clinton's infidelities, obviously he's trying to defuse Bill Clinton. But what do you make of telegraphing this plan and of all places, the New York Times, where he's also attacked the reporters there? Well, one of the challenges, I think, for the Clinton campaign, Hillary Clinton, is making sure that her campaign's about looking forward and into the future. And the more they talk about Bill Clinton and 1990s and prosperity at the time, yes, a lot of Democrats feel fondly about that era, but it isn't talking necessarily about what she wants to do for the future of the country. And so that can be a double-edged sword. Look, Donald Trump is taking most of the media attention almost every single day. So when she gets those little slivers, she needs to maximize them, yeah. right? She needs to talk about her proactive plan and talk Talking about Bill Clinton isn't necessarily that. But is that, you know, is that reasonable when Donald Trump's campaign is make America great again? That means the past. And when you look at past success that many people who are still alive can remember, that's associated with Bill Clinton's administration. So why does she need to be a progressive in her views? And Donald Trump is reflecting on days that may or may not include diversity or, or gender diversity in any of form that he sees as leadership. I think that at the end of the day, most elections are won by the candidate who's convincing voters that they have a better vision right. going forward. And so Trump, even if his vision is hearkening back to America's past, he's at least trying to talk about his vision going forward. And I think it's it's urgent for the Clinton campaign to make sure that that's what she's doing, too. Now, she's been trying to do that. Uh, it's something her campaign knows is an issue. Uh, but it, this is the double-edged sword. Bill Clinton, incredibly popular figure, especially popular among Democratic base voters. But she wants to talk about her vision and not right. necessarily his vision. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.